Hey y'all, it's Taylor from Tattoo Teacher Plans. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. So today we are doing a mock leftovers spread. I put up a box on Instagram stories the other day asking for video ideas and what you guys wanted to see. And I saw this one, I don't even know how many times, quite a few times. You wanted to see some mock spreads, some leftover spreads. So I'm going to put both of those together and we're going to do a mock leftover spread. So this is going to be just a purely creative spread for me to put together and just using my leftovers. So here is what I'm working with. I went and dug through my stuff and I did a leftovers video where I organized all my leftovers like a month and a half ago. So I really didn't have a ton to pull from. But I saw kind of a common theme throughout some of the um, sheets. So we're going for a very bright, colorful, kind of primary colors uh, kind of spread. And I've got several different things here. And it's going to have kind of like a school theme because that's what I had. So here are the full boxes that I found. So I've got six and they're all very different, but they kind of have the same kind of a uh, color scheme. So we're just going to go with it. I've got these boxes left from Lemon and... Oh, I'll try to tell you like where these are from too. So I have... Um, this is from Coffee Monsters Co. This is Shameless Stickers. These are Lemon and Honey. And these are More Avenue. So this is a sheet from Lemon and Honey Studio. I've got a couple things from Crafty Banana from the Gilmore Summer Collection. Just some boxes and I found these glitter headers that I figured would probably match pretty well. Um, also this page has some icons and different things on it. And then I've got these little swatches from More Avenue. This from Shameless Stickers. I thought that some of these icons would be kind of cute and some of the splashes. Leftover Deco from More Avenue. And then these sheets are all from More Avenue. So I've got this one with some headers and things. This one and this one. Actually, this one is kind of messed up. I remember when I was doing this spread. Some of the boxes are not really usable, like this one. Something happened with the, I'm assuming the cutting machine. But it's like all kind of cut up there. But we're going to make things work. I think I have enough to put something together. I just need to pull some washi and I don't know, maybe just washi because I've got glitter headers here. All right, so let me go grab some washi and then we'll be ready to get started. By the way, this is my play planner from Sadie Stickers. I just really like the paper and the blank slate. So that's what I'm using. So let me go grab that washi and we'll get started. So I'm just gonna mainly give you some tips and tricks here for how to make your leftover spread just shine and sparkle and just kind of look really cohesive. So first is you're probably not going to have any bottom washi, but this is where you get to pull from your washi stash and it's a really good opportunity to use some washi that you don't really use that often. I've actually had this polka dot washi for years. It's still in good shape and I love it. If you don't have any washi that matches, um, you might think about investing in some really plain washi. You can get packs at Michael's for like 20 bucks. If you use a coupon, you can get it for even cheaper. And just have some staples in your stash. For glitter headers, I decided this week I only had so many of this color. So I used it for five days, but then I pulled in a little retro weekend washi banner, which I secretly, not so secretly, love this look. It's so fun. It's so cute. And if you don't have as many full boxes as you want, it takes up some space where you don't have to use full boxes on the weekend, which is really nice. So I start with the bigger strips first. And I like to separate the different patterns and make sure that I don't overlap like any similar patterns. And then I pull in the smaller pieces and then I finish with like nice big pieces. And it just looks so cute and I love it. I really like using my X-Acto blade to cut this too because it gets it so clean. It looks so nice. And I thought that maybe this would fit across the top of that, but it did not. So I nixed that idea. 
Then I am going to go to my date covers. So I didn't have any. Often I will have some date covers left, like if I use the deco of a kit. But in this case, I didn't have any that would work with my color scheme here. So I found these in my stash. They're very old. I didn't even know if they were still sticky, but I lifted one up and tested it and they were. So I just pulled in these black ones. These may be something else. Like if you're doing leftovers regularly, maybe you want to invest in some date cover options as well, just to have in your stash. So for the sidebar, I'm setting it up like I normally set up my sidebars, except for I'm going to go a little bit, um, maybe different. <laughs> I'm going to show you how like you could set it up if you wanted to use this functionally. So I have a lot of sidebar um, options. So I chose to put in a checklist. I also thought about maybe putting in a couple of meal planning kind of items. And then I also thought about using one of my weekly cleaning lists. I used to use these all the time and I just haven't had the opportunity or need to use them recently. So I just pulled from my stash. You'll see that in a minute. Um, I have a bunch of these left and I might go back to using them in some way, but um, they just, they're so cute and I really like them and they're really perfect for me and how I clean. So I just put in a couple of things just to give you some ideas of what you could do with your sidebar. Um, this really skinny washi came in handy a lot because it was perfect to just fill a little bit of space. So for the full boxes, I knew that I wanted to use them in a way that like separated them away from each other. So I used them in this like zigzag pattern. And then I left, like I mentioned before, full boxes off of the weekend because the weekend washi, it kind of took up some of that space that I would have used for full boxes. So for icons and for different kinds of boxes, I think leaning into the variety is where it's at because you're going to have a lot of different things to work with that look different from each other and you may not think that they will go together but there are a couple of things you can do to make it kind of mesh so one of those things is to use the color strategically so you can put like this lime green color is in a couple of different areas of this spread and I knew that I wanted to use it throughout because I really wanted to bring in that coffee then true crime full box onto the other side of the page. I also knew that I wanted to bring in lots of yellow because I had the glitter headers and I had that box in the sidebar and the red also was a key color. The kind of the trick to this is to spread it out throughout the spread and make sure that it doesn't get bunched up anywhere. And you may think that that like is kind of hard to do, but if you really think about it ahead of time and decide, I'm definitely gonna use this full box on this side of the page, I'm definitely gonna use it this um, half box color or this icon color on this side. Um, if you just kind of spend a minute before you even start your spread thinking about that, it makes it a little bit easier. So I'm just kind of showing you how I can use little washi strips to fill some space and using different colors in the column. So my goal really with every column is to use all of the different colors that I have. So the colors that I have are the yellow, the red, the green, the lime green. Then I have this like teal blue color and I thought that was really fun to bring in from the sidebar all the way across. And then I thought about bringing in the bright blue, like the darker blue, because of the sidebar sticker and because of the full box with the backpack. So you really can draw some inspiration from what you have to work with in order to just blend it all together. So on the other side, I'm doing the same thing. At times, I kind of look at the other uh, like the left side of the spread just to make sure that I'm kind of connecting with all of the different colors. But you saw just there, I took some yellow pieces and I spread them out 
if you're doing this for real, then you would do it every day and you'd have the time to think about it. Or if you're doing it as a memory spread, again, you have the time to really plan it all out. So it doesn't, it may seem like it's kind of stressful and hard, but it pushes you to be creative too. It's fun. Like this spread, putting it together, it was really fun for me because I had to step just a little bit outside of what I normally do and really think too. I had to to put some um, some ideas together and I wasn't for sure at this point if it was all going to go together and then it just, it just did. And I, I just love it. So I'm bringing in more of the teal on this side because I realized I had a lot of yellow, but I was missing some of that teal color. So I'm going to bring in some more of that. Also, the pops of the lime green, I made sure to connect to that full box and to bring in that color from the other side. Using the half boxes, however many that I have, using those, spreading them out. You have so many patterns in this spread, but they all just kind of go together. So really the key to this is choosing what you're going to work with. So you can see how many sheets I have here. I have a bunch of sheets. It's probably 8 to 12 different sheets that I pulled from, especially if we're talking like putting the full boxes together. I mean, it took me probably 15 minutes to really choose what I wanted to do and come up with a game plan, but it totally paid off because I knew that I had enough to choose from once I got started. So I wasn't like panicking or anything during the making of the spread. I already knew that I had plenty to choose from and I could always fall back on the washi like you see here or on um, other icons in my collection or other pieces from my collection. So the last thing I wanted to do was to add a weekend banner and I thought about bringing in that bright dark blue. It looks kind of purple on screen here, but if I hold it up to like the stickers on the other side, it's like exactly the same, but it had some like hot pink on it. So I took a red pin and I changed the pink to red just to kind of match the kit a little bit better. And then I'm just gonna lay that on top of the washi the weekend washi it looks so cute and i'm kind of obsessed with how this turned out i don't know why i was doubting myself at all okay that was a lot of fun to put this spread together i did just leave it blank just so you can get the idea of what you can do with leftovers um i just didn't feel like making up fake plans like i did with this spread which was really fun but i was doing it just just to get the layout. So this is a before the pen kind of spread, which I've never done on my channel before, I don't think, but this is so fun. Like it actually all kind of meshes together. And I think because I made like conscious decisions along the way to like spread out certain elements, like this striped washi, these little washi strips, um, and it just kind of comes together. It looks so cute love this and I hope you loved it too. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when I upload and I'll see you next time. Bye!